Hey there! I was approached by John, who gave me a Conway Stewart Winston and a note of Charles Dickens, and he thought that was not enough, so he also gave me the Visconti Ragtime Limited Edition, and he gave me this pen. And this pen, to be honest, this has been one of my grail pens for years. And now I got it from John, just as a gift, which makes it even more spectacular. I was in London uh, in May 2012 for a course I was taking, and I went to Fordham and Mason. Uh, that is a, a department store where the, the shop clerks actually still wear frock coats. Super nice, super classy, uh, a really nice place, and they have a stationary section. And that is where I bought my yard lead retro grand and that was one of the first pens I ever reviewed but while I was there uh, the show clock also said you should hold this pen which was another yard lead and I loved it but it was not exactly cheap uh, so I held off uh, held off on that pen at that point but now I got it from John so John thanks you ever, thank ever thank you ever so much uh, because you probably did not know that I was such a huge fan of this pen and I really wanted to buy it for a long time and every time I thought we have it it's so expensive and now I got it as a gift so that's amazing and the pen I'm talking about first I'm going to show you this just to keep you in stress for a little bit longer John also sent me this super cool pen pouch from Yardalet which is leather and I love the design of this thing so it has a little flap but it also has this band which pops open and then you unravel that band then this whole flap comes off it so it opens and then you can put your pen in there so this is not the pen I'm going to discuss today but you can just put your pen in there it's very soft material very pleasant you put it in you close it up you put that little wrapper band around it again and then uh, with a bit of luck this is a very thick pen so it doesn't make it very easy but then you can slide that back in place and then you have your pen completely covered up which I think is superb. I've never seen such a fancy uh, design on a pen pouch but Yardlet really did a nice uh, job on, on this one. Very nice uh, leather as you can see. Uh, has the name on there, very smooth, very supple. Uh, I don't have I don't have a model name on this so you have to check out the Yardlet website if you want it. I'm sorry, I don't know which it is. Now here's the pen. Comes in this cardboard sleeve, but Yardlet I know makes excellent pen boxes. So you have the cardboard. Um, and then is there is a wooden box that's actual wood, and that's what the pen's in. Has this nice little clasp which you open up, and here you have it. That's right. It is a Viceroy Grand in the Victorian finish. Uh, now, before I show you that pen, I'll show you what else is in the box. Here you have a velvet cover, which you can lift off. You have this whole sort of drawer-like thing in there. You can lift that off, and then you have uh, the guarantee and user guide from Yardled. Uh, you get a Yardled polishing cloth, which is super nice. I use this a lot. For example, on vintage nibs, you may have seen me use it in some of my repair videos. You first use the inside, then you use the outside, and then your whole pen is polished beautifully. And this is the actual pen. Now, this is a thing of beauty. Um, all of this has a very silvery color, and that's because it is massive sterling silver. So it is solid. Um, it's a big pen, it's a heavy pen. Um, this is serious. Here you have the Schaefer Prelude, not the smallest of pens, uh, and here you have the Viceroy Grand. So it is definitely grand. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. Let's start at the finial, very top of the cap. Uh, you see it's very reflective, but there's nothing on there, no jewel or anything. And yes, that is my webcam. Then you have this super cute clip design. I really love those yard lead clips. Uh, it says Yard of Lead, and it has these, these two little rivets. Yard of Lead started as a company that made mechanical pencils, and if I understand correctly, you got four three-inch leads with your pencil. 
So in other word, in other words, a yard of lead, yard of lead. That's why they got the name. Okay. Now top of the cap, you have that nice smoothly polished bit, and then three rings, and then this is the Victorian finish. Here you have a little plate. You can have that engraved with your name or something. Um, and here you have 925, 92.5% silver, that's what's necessary to make it sterling silver, if I understand correctly, and another hallmark, and you can align that with the barrel, and then you see all these hallmarks. Now, I don't know what all of these mean. You have the yard lead logo, and then you have 925, again, you have the anchor, you have a little lion. I know that all of those are important for it to be marked as sterling silver, so that's very, very cool. Um, as I said, this finish, I mean, guys, this is stunning. Beautiful engraving. And then it ends the end of the barrel again with those three rings, and then uh, the end cap is again very reflective. The pen pops open. I'm clearly not going to post this thing because I don't want to scratch anything on it. You have a section, it's a big section. All of this again is silver. And then you have the nib. Um, and the nib is broad. It says Yard of Lead, 18 carat, 750. Now, a little bit of a story here. I was told when I bought my yard letter the nib was silver, and I thought that is highly unlikely. So at some point, I contacted yard lead and said, "Okay, uh, what's the deal? Is that really silver?" And then, believe it or not, the CEO of yard lead emailed me back uh, very in in very short span of time, and he said, "No, it's not silver. We use solid gold." And then we plate it um, with nickel uh, so that it actually matches the silver finish of the rest of the pen. So it is not white gold, what some people seem to think. It is yellow gold, but it is plated with nickel, just so you know. Okay, the section is big and it's very smooth. I have not really had issues with it getting slippery, but yes, if you use it for a long time, your fingers get a little bit sweaty, you will feel a little bit of slipperiness because it is you're holding highly polished silver. You unscrew the pen and then you get a... Um, I always find it fascinating that there's a little rubber, black rubber O-ring. I always wonder whether you can also use these as eyedroppers, but all of the barrel is metal, so I personally wouldn't recommend it. Then you get a converter, uh, which you just pop out, and this one is pretty cool because it actually has a metal uh, grip, uh, which doesn't really add anything except for a very good grip and I guess looks. So that's quite interesting. You pop it in, screw the barrel in place, and then you have your gorgeous pen. Um, is it big? Yeah, it's big. And okay, I'll very carefully post it. You post it, it's really big, and it's heavy. You feel the weight of the silver, and that's exactly what I remembered from London when I held it. You feel that weight, making it, uh, it feel very robust, and like you're really holding <clears throat> a big serious pen. And that's very cool. Now, I think we need to take a couple of measurements, and I'm sure you're dying to see this thing right, see if it's really as good as, as you know what you pay for. Short answer is yes. I love this nib. It doesn't skip. And uh, nice and broad, very consistent ink flow. Even for long writing, it doesn't run dry, it keeps flowing. It's smooth, it's fantastic. It gives you a sort of feedback that lets you know that you're writing. It's not scratchiness. Beautiful. Okay, now, weight. In my experience, a 50 gram pen is heavy. We experience 50 grams as heavy. This pen is 70 grams. So that really is a whole lot of pen. Size capped is 100 and 48 millimeters. That is long. Uh, it's almost six inches. Uncapped, it's 138. No, sorry, 139. Uh, that is a good five, almost, I think, about five and a half inches or something. Section diameter at the narrowest point, it's about nine and a half. At the widest point, it's about 12 and a half millimeters. And one thing I have not shown you yet, uh, but which I find pretty cool, is that on the section there is a marking. I'm not sure if you can read it, but here it says 925 sterling, which is quite cool. 
Okay, uh, I, I noticed I forgot the what do I like about it, what do I not like about it, what do I like about it, everything. What do I not like about it, nothing. Um, this is a grill pen, this is superb. Uh, other things I don't like about it, yeah, of course. Yes, it's super expensive, yes, it's very heavy, so for really long extended writing, it will tire your hand out. Um, clearly, if this gets stolen, your, your, your life is ruined. Uh, they're very expensive, um, so I, I can see how uh, people would keep this at home, not take it to work, for example. Um, so yes, clearly it has issues. It, it, it has, you can have some trouble fitting this into a standard pen case. I'm doing that now, because as you can see, it's, it's very big. Um, but I do get it to fit uh, in there. Um, but yeah, though, you, you could say that those are downsides. Big, heavy, bulky, um, flashy, which some people don't like. But believe me, if you ever have a chance to try this out in a shop, do it, just for fun. Because it really is a superb feeling to write with this. Okay, we need a writing sample. I say again, John, thank you so much for sending me this fantastic pen. I absolutely adore it. This one is going to stay in for a long, long time. Um, Guys, I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. All right, here we go with the Yard of Lead. Viceroy. Grand. The nib is broad, and the um, ink is Yard of Lead Blue. One of my favorite blues. When it comes to blues, I don't use blue inks a whole lot, but this one is definitely one of my absolute favorites. The paper is Claire Fontaine, and we're going to do a writing sample. Even for these, what is it, seconds that I've been holding this pen, I'm already feeling the weight. Uh, it's really all that silver, it really, really adds heft to this pen. So for very long writing sessions, um, I'm not sure whether this is the pen. It's very stable, but it also really weighs you down a bit. Let's do this a bit faster. Very smooth, very, very pleasant. Lovely pen to use. You see a little skip here and there, but it's really a smooth flowing nice pen that gives you almost no resistance when you use it on this very smooth paper. On papers with a bit more texture you, texture, you get a pleasant feedback from Yard Lead nibs, at least in my experience. This is the second one I use and it's, it's, it gives you a type of feedback that's not actually scratchy, it just lets you know that you're feeling with a pen on the paper. What about wetness? Well, my Yard Lead Retro Grand is not a gusher but it's definitely wet. Um, and this pen is the same. Uh, it's, it's definitely on the wet side of things. When it comes to line variation, this is an 18K nib. And you can definitely carefully squeeze out a bit of line variation and also get some nice shading of your ink. You don't see it that well in this blue, but here, right here you see it a little bit. So that's all very, very cool. Now we have some reverse writing. And as you can see, that's not really possible. The pen runs too dry for that, and you can't really read your writing anymore. Having said that, I think this is a gorgeous and beautiful pen. I mean... Look at this finish. It's shiny, it's gorgeous, I absolutely love it. Um, so, John, thank you very, very much for sending me this extremely beautiful and precious piece. Uh, I love it. I'm going to use this one with pleasure. And to all you guys out there, I hope this was useful. And uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.